thing was, uh, everybody said the sink word, and I thought, right, I'll I'll take a take a drink of coffee beforehand. <laughs> and I took a sip, and I'm quite tired, and I'm, I'm a bit achy, and like my brain just like switched off from the other thing he was going to do, and just went, oh, that's really nice. Nice coffee. <laughs> three, three, two, one, drink. <laughs> but oh, who's that over there? Hello, listener. Um, welcome back to our E3 coverage, and after the mahusive Microsoft show. Um, which Phil Spencer himself said, what a great evening's entertainment. He didn't say that. He did. He did. He didn't. He actually said, it books us in. He did. And then, then walked by and went into Iceland and bought a frozen turkey <laughs> and some cheap spinach. He actually came out on the stage with a jacket, but he had not a books us in t-shirt on this time. No. Yeah, the reason he got the spinach, when he was walking away, he just went, it's green. <laughs> that is a record. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, Ubisoft then, so we'll delve straight in and we'll boogie on down because they just launched straight into Just Dance. And I think if... Um, this is a game that's always fitted badly into this conference mm. and launching straight into it um, with it as bright and brilliant and celebratory, especially given what had happened um, yep. in the US not long before. It was mm. just like a wonderful celebration of like yeah. being... Uh, ebullient. Um, it was it was fantastic. Ib- Ib- ebullient, absolutely. Huh? Ebullient. No. Ebullient. We'll get we'll too, far, too far. Ebullient. Too much. Uh, no, I agree. <laughs> I thought this was a very good start because they usually put just dance somewhere in the middle, don't they? Mm. And everyone's yeah, going to go. Breaks the floor a bit for oh, people look, who aren't just dance. <laughs> they might as well call it just make a cuppa. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, true, though. That's the point where people go for a wee or to grab a bun. Yeah, it's 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 the football games of the Ubisoft conference, isn't it? <laughs> um, but no, I, I I agree. I thought it was a great, colourful, bright like look at me. And they had the weird pre-show where they had the guy in the crowd with the like the the, the John Travolta outfit on. Did anyone see that? No. no oh my I god! So I, I turned on the show like two minutes earlier because I wasn't watching the PC show. Um, and they had the, like a, a, an intro bit in the conference where these two sort of guys were chatting to the crowd and hyping people up. It was all right. There was a guy sitting there with like literally a like a seventies disco outfit on, like a mm. bright pink shirt, sort of open halfway down, and like a, a waistcoat over the top. And it's like, why? Yeah, but when we went <laughs> to to, uh, to Bloodborne, I'm sure you were wearing a turtleneck, so you can't say anything. My if he's dressed is... as John Travolta, you came as Napoleon Solo. <laughs> you leave my turtleneck alone, damn it. I... Well, you leave John Travolta alone. I will not. <laughs> you, you will. I will not. You can't make me. Um, James, did Adidas you enjoy the, the dancing? I did. I thought it was good. They didn't. Uh, they obviously drew attention to the dancing, but they didn't even really make much of the fact it was just Dance uh, 17. Mm, yeah. I think it was up in the top corner of the screen that that's what it was for, but it was just... Hey, we have the biggest selling and arguably best ba- dancing game or dance game of uh, any any other developer. Mm. Uh, you know what it's all about here. Why don't we just have some fun with it? Um, and yeah, think, that, that, think, that's a game that tends to break the flow of the Ubisoft shows for me, just because I'm not. I, I don't play that game. I'm not a massive fan of it. Um, and putting it either right at the beginning or right at the end makes sense because it doesn't mm. it interrupt the flow. It leads you in or leads you out nicely from the rest of the show, mm. I thought. Mm. Yeah, it was, was just great. a great opening to the show with almost an excuse for a game sort of to be tagged on. And like I say, it, yep. as a yep. as a celebration of the wonders of um, of spirit and humanity as well. I just thought it was, it was, yeah, I thought it was gorgeous. Great. Colourful and triumphant and start, yeah, yeah. Nice, colourful uh, and enthusiastic opening for yeah. a colourful, yeah. enthusiastic show. Not to spoil too much of my opinions, but uh, I mean, Ubi, no, but, Ubi um, isn't it? In a nutshell, yeah. Um, sure. But here we here we get Aisha Tyler, who's absolutely superb. Mm. Yeah, she yep. she owns the show, and we and we've mentioned on uh, on the likes of the the EA show that they could do with someone with a little personality and pizzazz that can laugh at themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And is passionate about gaming to present their show because yeah. she she controls this show so professionally. Yeah. She's reading from AutoQ without re- sort of uh, making it obvious that she's reading from AutoQ because she's adding so much of herself and so much personality in between that it just you can't take your eyes off her. She's yeah. she's absolutely superb. Mm. And because she's an actress and a performer, she knows how to 
do all of that stuff without it being awkward and she knows how to make it a, a performance without it feeling disingenuous or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah it's, no, it's, effortless. it's effortless for her and it's, yeah. it seems genuine as well. Like She, she wants yeah. to be there. She loves doing yeah. it. You can tell yeah. it. You know, it's not like... Oh. But she loves the games, doesn't she? And she's always <laughs> said that she's she's enjoyed getting sneak peeks of games sort of beforehand and she's, she's a big fan and she's a big gamer yeah. and I think all of those combined to the fact that... I know she said she, she got a lot of... Uh, Flack when she first started it and stuff, but people love mm. her. Oh yeah. yeah, people get people absolutely love her, and yeah. her performance this time was the best yet. And she she walks on that stage like she's loving it, but she's ready for a confrontation. She walks on like a cowboy <laughs> walking yeah, into walking into a yeah. bar, and everybody turns in, and that cowboy's got the best guns, the most accurate shot, and probably Varta. <laughs> <laughs> also, is she the tallest woman in the world? <laughs> she she wears very big shoes as well. And stands next to poor um, little Eve Kimo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I have, I have a question before we move on from Just Dance. Um, who who was your favourite dancing person, and why was it the giraffe? I I don't remember them individually. Do you remember the giraffe? He had a monocle and everything. <laughs> so so you can you can fall in love with the with the giraffe that's over yeah. there, but John Travolta sitting over there, you have to mark. Yes. Yes, I do. Because uh, yeah, it's a giraffe with a monocle and a little, lovely little bow tie, and he was really getting into it. So that was your favourite. Uh, yeah. My my favourite was Jeremy. Yeah, <laughs> not Barry. <laughs> <laughs> so those are your favourites then. Do you do you reckon? Mm. But moving mm. on to Ghost Recon oh. Wildlands, it finished the show last time. It started the show this time. Uh, very dramatic, uh, very Ubisoft. Mm. Sort of, this is how you play the game. This is people chatting. Before uh, we get into it, before we get... Is... Like, can I... I'm midway no, into it! <laughs> Fuck you! Wait did your it, turn! Did this game blow our fucking minds last year? I don't remember my mind being blown, because I no. had to work out what it was. That absolutely could have waited. No. <laughs> You're a rude, the first disingenuous. Line, the first line of the intro. You deserve to have your fucking toilet blocked. <laughs> you rude man. I can still flush it, but I have to use my hand. So yeah, I, 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 I thought this was. Uh, I thought this was a really good demo. Um, it looks fun. Again, it looks like a um, like they're advancing the same sort of systems that they. Uh, they've been working through like Watchdogs and the Division and stuff. Um, love the surroundings. Look like a, a ton of fun. Apparently, the view from the floor was that um, the game was great to play. That lots of stuff could happen and go wrong. And um, on the the Easy Ally stuff that I watched, they said that one one person that was in with them was an absolute cock end. It was just like twatting about and not following the group, and they pretty much left him to it. And he was screaming and um, trying to trying to kill the people that were getting him and getting into more trouble, and it just left him to it. They just did what they needed to do, and they were saying like the way that the game actually develops around you and and tries to bring mm. you together or push you apart is um, is really good. Mm. But um, it looked kind of just causeish to me. Um, yeah. Normally these um, normally these things you be you be stuck in trade. I'd say weren't really my my kind of thing but I'm after a uh, after stuff like uh like the division I'm just viewing them as one big daft movie mm. um and this looked like a big daft movie albeit a little more serious than kind of a, a just cause by the looks of things um Mr James Carter sir so the the joining opening... us once again yeah, thank indeed. you hello thank you thank you very much for having me back 9 minutes to in. To talk Ubisoft, um, what Patrick is called? It's called shaking it's a things up, title yeah, card. adding I, a bit I got of it. yeah, it's good. Having, having a bit of zhuzh. Yeah. yeah, it's the delayed title card. Twenty minutes into a film, yeah. title pops up. Mm-hmm. You think, yeah, they like, did that oh, right. Yeah, yeah, gets your attention. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, at the at Bastard. the end of last year, I. I wasn't overly enthused about Wildlands because it kind of didn't really show what it was going to look like as a game. Mm. Um, what did get me enthused was the opening kind of cinematic trailer part of it, where it was kind of very dynamic, sort of following one character to another and uh, looked yeah, very yeah, yeah. Um, 
chaotic in that just cause way but very cinematic in that kind of ubisoft way uh, that they go for um unfortunately the gameplay demo afterwards i thought was boring um i i i, I hate to be a, a negative nancy on this one but I could see they were going for a sort of uh, emergent, sort of uh, just cause type thing, but with a more co-op Metal Gear Five um, aspect to it. You know that kind of sneaking into the base, but as a group and the communication. I just have to shout it again: actors acting in a way that no one ever playing a video game has ever acted. It, Hashtag Ubi Chat. Uh, um, just really annoyed me uh, as as always. It's just it, it's off putting from what what's happening on screen. Um, I'd almost rather they didn't have any chat at all. Um, no, I would rather they didn't have any chat at all. It's not even an almost. Um, but the, it's maybe it was just an odd section to show off, uh, sort of stealthily sneaking into a base because it brought the pace way down. I love that you can do that, but they brought the pace way down for the vast majority of what they showed. And then clearly purposefully triggered a response because the guy who got discovered, quote unquote discovered, switched to his non-silenced weapon right before deliberately walking in front of one of the enemies to get spotted. And then the actor went, oh no, I've been spotted. Well, yeah, of course you did because you knew you were going to walk in front of him and deliberately get spotted. It just looked very... Yeah, but there's, there's often a degree of theatrics in, to, in, in these the things to good. sort of try and... At least avoid doing yeah. something as obvious as that that just seemed perfect. but I mean you are I James kind of, perfect I, stealth carter though aren't you so well, and, and, and I don't think stealth <laughs> games show particularly well on a stage like this so w- once um, they had been spotted and they were charging away you know out the base across the um, the countryside that looked far more entertaining to me um, not that I wouldn't enjoy playing a co-op stealth game but I don't think that demos particularly well the pace just dropped way way down um, and focused an awful lot on that sort of um, theatricality and the acted um, out voiceover, which didn't work for me. It put the focus on the wrong thing, I think. Um, but hey, I am I am one guy. What do I know? Coastal mainstay Patrick Stardust. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I've kind of got to echo James, to be honest. Um, like, it looked all right. But it didn't excite me. Uh, like the gameplay demo was fine, um, although I did enjoy the bits where he's kind of doing the sneaking bit, and he sees a guy and he's like, "Bang, bang, bang!" It's all right. He's dead. No one saw. Like, mm, hang on, that was a loud <laughs> gun. You don't know that no one heard it, and you've gone round a corner. There's another man. I would have heard that. <laughs> you know, there are lots of noises that could have gone on. I can't defend that really. It's it, a game, it though. It's a it's but at a least make the gun go game. Tuff, tuff, tuff. If you're gonna like at least silence the gun, make it go truth not bang bang. Yeah. He's dead. It's fine. It's, I did it in a stealth way. It's a game. It's fine. Um, yeah, you I did thought, a stealth. I didn't mind the bit. I mean, I personally didn't mind when they did switch to going loud because they didn't want to demo off as much different stuff. Mm. Like yep, here's yep. the stealth. Here's the loud bit. Here's the cars. Way. Um, like the car stuff looked kind of fun. Uh, yeah, like definitely. like CJ, like you say, it's, it looks a bit just causey, you know, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Jump in a big daft helicopter and fly around, and oh, here's some cars. And I thought the chases looked good. Um, but am I going to play a big co-op game like this? Nah. Some are. With the rules of of your Ubisoft conferences mm. of years gone by, does this mean you're? Yeah, doubtful it'll be it'll be <laughs> game one. of the year next year. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, it didn't. It didn't do a hell of a lot for me. It's like it was like it looked fine, uh, but after the division, I've I've been a bit burned personally. So I'm like, nah. Moving. On. I've, I've never gone with a Ghost Recon game though. Uh, as different and as cool as this one looked, uh, I just I just don't think it, it didn't convince me to buy it, or it's not got me interested yet. I Show, guess me single player. Show me single player. That's what I want to say. Yeah, we don't know what the single player aspects like, mm. and we don't know whether the. Mm disparate aspects of like the um, OTT sort of cross country uh, all terrain vehicle driving Mm. and the sort of loud banging you know the the loud and proud weapons versus the stealth how that's all going to come together it may seem a little bit uh, a bit fractured just from that demo Mm. I don't know I mean uh, I was I was the other side of the um, uh, the Patrick equation with the fact that the 
the um, the division mm-hmm. did nothing for me for three years, and then I ended up playing the beta mm-hmm. and really enjoyed it. And as it stands at the moment, it's one of those games that I can kind of come home, and if I'm a bit achy and I'm a bit tired, and I haven't really got the mental capacity to throw myself into like a, a Dark Souls or something that that will I'll, I'll need to super concentrate on, I can fall into that and essentially play mm-hmm. a movie. Mm-hmm. And I, there's, I think there's, there's something to be said for a game like that that you can just relax into, um, and that's mean. That's not to say that the division doesn't thrill me because I, I had some amazing shootouts in like the, the the bigger levels and that. But it's, but again, it's it's the equivalent of like sitting in front of like a a really good popcorn movie um, that I'm evolving as I go, and it's nice to to have that continuity night after night. And, uh, getting back on there and seeing the map and going like right I need some if I get some tech supplies I can upgrade this and right I'll go to I'll go into uh, try and free up that hospital or go in that there's a group that are making napalm in that factory and it's it's big it's daft it's there's numbers flying off people's heads and I, I just it's a game I can relax into this whilst I don't think on the face of it, I'll, I'll I'll be there sort of day one, or it's my sort of thing to buy. It's, it might it may well be one of those because Ubi games drop in price like mm-hmm. super quickly. Um, that I, I I might hear a bit about or see a video, and it could catch my imagination. Just think, I've not really played that sort of thing. I'll give that a go, or there might be a space in in my evenings to to relax into that kind of game because. Uh, uh, Unity did did yep. a, a yep. similar sort of thing for me as well, which I which I loved. So, yes. um, any any more to add before we? Oh, this is a good place to interject. This actually. Um, did anyone else notice the staging, the E three, uh, the Ubisoft stage, uh, with their hashtag Ubi E yep. three? Yes. Because Laura pointed something out, and once I'd seen it, I couldn't not see it. From the side, it looked like it said Lube three. <laughs> and maybe, maybe. once you. Once you've seen it, Get it it's like, right, you. yep, we're at the yeah, Loop 3 show. It. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's Loop 3, yeah. Um, please tell me on Twitter if you noticed that too, because I'm going mad, because no one else seems to have realised. Loop 3. Right, so we, um, <laughs> fittingly, uh, we slip into uh, the fractured <laughs> butthole. <laughs> Don't pretend like that was a plan. I'm, so I'm anyway. legitimately enjoying it, though. It was good. Um, did you play the first game? Did you like or dislike the first game? And uh, what did you make of both the the glimpses of the game and also Trey uh, Parker four and questions. Matt Stone? Uh, I'm going to answer it. Yes, yes, it is. yes, and yes. I, 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 I know you can count. Up, I know <laughs> you can count up to five. You pedantic <laughs> bastard. Um, yes, so yes, 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 and yes. Um, uh, yeah, that me? Is that my segment done? <laughs> That's it. You're done. <laughs> my, my thoughts on, yeah, yeah. on South Park. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right so then we went into <laughs> um yeah I, I i did enjoy the first one um i th- i thought it got across south park's style of humor obviously that's not for everyone so i found it funny i don't necessarily expect everyone would but uh yeah very uh lewd in places um pushed the boat out in terms of comedy i thought more than any other games managed to with me uh but it is that very specific style um gameplay wise it did feel a little bit held together with tape and string but um, not necessarily in a bad way it was still fun all the way through it's just it kind of felt like uh, there was a lot more it's kind of apt in that regard really <laughs> isn't it with the with the, the paper yeah exactly characters it, it felt like they they got the gameplay like... together just enough to to make it fun and and not maybe refined it enough so that it, it maybe deliberately still had some kind of rough edges in that respect, but no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, great fun the first one because it was Chris Avalon, wasn't it, who did uh, uh, Fallout New Vegas? Uh, I think he, so. Yeah. He worked on that. Mm. Mm. Uh, what did you make of the the stuff that was on the show? Because I must admit, like the the crowd seemed to be as enjoy mm. enjoying it as much as I was, and and the little. The little moments of you know sit sit at the table and um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I I I really enjoyed it and the trailer has come on um, mm. 
Twitch quite a lot. And yeah. I still laugh at the moment where they run at each other and then Kenny slaps me in the face. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I thought all of the all of the gameplay stuff I thought I thought was good and the, the trailers for it, yeah, I thought looked great. Um seems like from what I saw, it seems like they might have changed the combat a bit. It looked mm. Yeah, tile based. Mm, yeah, I think, I think I heard someone so say it might play a little almost darkest dungeon esque in terms of your position is going to be more important. Whereas in the first one, your position mm. was just well, that's where that that's how they've laid out this fight, and it didn't mm. actually matter who was where as far as whether you could attack someone or not. Um, as far as I remember, um, whereas this time, yeah, it might be more to do with positioning and yeah, tile based mm. stuff. So. Um, but no, I thought all the stuff they showed was was great and very in keeping with the tone of the original game. Obviously, they're switching their focus onto in this case uh, superhero films and really going after that stuff, which seems like a a topic even post Deadpool that's ripe for having another pop at. Mm-hmm. Um, I did think, and I'd be interested to hear what you guys thought. Always nice to see. Trey and Matt and know that they're involved in the game and see kind of some of their fingerprints on the script. Seemed like they were on the stage for a long time. Seemed like a lot of talking. I I like Mm. their company though, I must admit, and they seem to revel in kind Mm. of the awkwardness as much as the laughter. I'm sort of provoker a little bit. I did like the little joke at the end, like, um, when's it coming out? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Is that when you think it's coming out? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That was great. Um. I like the um, the character creating there as well. It's, it seemed quite cool, and and Cal- Cartman was insistent that everybody have like yep. a, a dark origin. I do, I'd love that. It looks fun, and also they they giving away a copy of uh, of the first game sort of mm. free. Well, I think it, they said you pre-order it as I well. I never finished so it. Yeah, I never yeah, finished the first game. I only got yeah. three hours in because I was oh, playing it on a borrowed three hundred and sixty, yeah. and I never kind of got too far. Uh, cause I have to give the 360 back. This was when Dark Souls 2 yeah, came out, and yeah. I got the 360 borrowed so I could review it. And I just played that. Like, and, and then by I the time it came that. time to play South Park, I'd already mm. kind of given it back. I was like, oh, piss, ruined that. Um, well, at least if you're only three hours in, you probably won't feel terribly bad about replaying that. But no, I, I would I mean, heartily recommend it. Yeah, uh, but like the whole the, the new combat thing uh, reminded me of two games. It reminded me of a PS1 game called Kudelka, uh, which was tile based in that fashion, where it was kind of a small mm. kind of you know five by five grid and you kind of just run around inside that mm. um it also reminded me of a of a forgotten not often mentioned rpg on the ps3 called enchanted arms um i know the name yeah 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 oh god isn't, isn't it just that's a, from software <laughs> um, isn't it? and that was look how that worked out <laughs> god well done um, <laughs> rats just right. applause it's well done of, Is that i've, any I've good? played um about 10 hours of it twice i get so, to the same point and kind of fade away with it um, it always sounds quite uh, enchanting to me. Oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> it, it's okay. It's it's all right. Uh, but you have like a, a grid, like a three by four grid on each side, and you're kind of using like shaped attacks. Hmm. So your attack might be a straight line, or it might be a T shape in front of you. So you have to position your guys around so you can attack them, but not group them up too much because then you'll get attacked. Because then you'll the get attacked. Time. Yeah, multiple. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like very very loose strategy kind of battles uh, yeah. in that way. And this looks to be the same sort of thing. Like it looks like yes. you have to be yeah. careful where you put your guys. Uh, take you know, not just stand there and hit the X button and, and attack. Uh, it looked a bit more strategic, uh, mm. which I like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the the character creation that had like you see a couple of the powers flash up. Um, and some of them had some very rude names, <laughs> and I can't remember them. But I remember seeing it going, "Oh, oh, that's good." Yes. Um, and the ability to fart so hard you tear a hole in time itself. Like yeah, it's like they've got a picture directly, of my face, it? and Especially... they've gone, "What do they think he would like in a video game?" Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, they've just put my Monday morning into a video game. Yeah. Like that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joys of getting older, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I think I, I think I think this is Youngsters looking like come back. it looks genuinely funny. I, I enjoyed what I played of the last game, like really legitimately funny. Um, I love South Park anyway. I always think it's one of the actual cleverest shows on telly, all things considered. Uh, mm. I love how it's evolved from just fart jokes in the original. Now it's fart jokes, but with politics in the background. Um, yeah, I love I love South Park's pieces, and <clears throat> I like the superhero stuff they did anyway. Like yeah. I'm 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 very big into the mythos of Coon and Friends, um, and I'm up for it. Yeah, fractured butthole, and what a great what can we just say again? What a brilliant name that is. 
What a perfect, perfect name. I think it gains extra points because it's taken some people a long time to realise <laughs> that it is a rude pun. <laughs> because it ties yeah. into the, the points, theme of the same time. So, yes. Um, I've I've got the I've got the first game, but I picked it up cheaply when mm. it uh, hit mm. Xbox One backwards compatibility, mm. and uh, but I've not played it. So I wonder if it's on oh, yeah. Steam sale. Do with doing that, I think. Yeah, mm. I'd imagine it wouldn't be that expensive anyway, especially the not on uh, the PC. It's five ninety nine. I've yeah. just checked. So here we can we could bargain. Uh, yeah, nothing. That's, that's I'm pretty sure my PC can handle a two D game. So right. five ninety nine is nothing. You should be an economist. <laughs> so we. <laughs> uh, you're probably actually oh, playing ten pound forty now. Moving on. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, uh, so we can hop, skip, and jump over these next three. So we've got the division DLC, which was planned and didn't we skip here, over that on the and, other show as well? Uh, expected. Um, this was particularly no. Look, this is important. Is really really this is important. Me. This is the. This is Go the. On. Isn't this the um, randomly? Is this the meat yeah, this, and this potatoes the of the game that you should bring me back? Tell it? us all about it, the, Patrick. Um, the underground, randomly generated dungeon, <laughs> no. right? How the fuck does that work? In no, the no. division, a game about a real city is like, no, we've got randomly generated undergrounds. That must be a fucking nightmare to get around You've the city. Clearly not been into the sewer system of New York. <laughs> the randomly generated. It must be it must be awful to be a plumber in. The sewer system of New York, where it's like, oh, do, do, I, do I go left? And do, do, oh no, Johnson, where's the blockage? I'm I fucked if I, I know. I've I've tried. It keeps moving. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we then had the most awkward demo of the show, which was Eagle Flight, which uh, looks like a that certainly is, is a, a game. That's on your VR. Head. <laughs> this was actually. Uh, first kind of announced and shown last year I think. It may have been before that but it was certainly there last year and it looked more like a This was the point where they, <laughs> where they sent pictures of eagles yes. so, yeah. but uh, It looked more like a kind of experiential it? flight VR thing where you're just flying around as a bird mm. and yet the demo they did where they, they dragged out a bunch of people onto the stage and put them into teams and had them pretend to be in some kind of great rivalry um, and it it's, it's a shooter that, that's also a bit of a sports game <laughs> and you fly about but you 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 spit at the enemies or or you is your call supposed think, to knock I them? I think it's like a call or magical, vortex, magical yeah. wind powers what? what? yeah I kind of was a bit what? I mean it looked kind of like I reckon like doing it would be quite fun just floating yeah. about I don't like the idea of making it into a, a sport where you need to kind of be flipping your head around quickly and stuff like it doesn't look like the kind of game where I'd want to be snapping my head around it looks like the sort where you want to glide and fly and take your time and explore the majesty not just kind of go oh, I'm getting a rabbit and like <laughs> I mean I'll be honest I mean my neck hurts at the moment uh, I pulled it a few days ago and I've been in agony ever since um, the mere concept of tilting my head upwards at the minute is foreign to me yeah. so imagine just sitting there for an hour at a time just flicking your head around back and forwards like well, no. the, the concept of having a VR headset on probably sounds Torturous to you, I guess. Well, it is in general. As long as it I can extra, just gently extra weight move. on your head when you If I can move left or right, I'll be fine. But up and down yeah. is impossible right now. Um, but like, I like the, I like the look of it. But it mm. looked like it played like a bastard. It looked like the sort of thing that you'd be bad at and you wouldn't be able mm. to get better at. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it looked awkward. Yeah. Um, it, as always, it's also up against VR being demoed, not really getting across what the game is at all, really. Mm. Or the experience of playing it, at least. Yeah. Um, and it's all, always fun to watch six people sat on a sofa with, you know, headsets on so you can't really see their face. Moving Having their heads. great fun <laughs> and you're not part of that. You know, that's always fun. But they all seem quite, like, bored. They're, none of them were going, woo! <laughs> that's true. Like... You seem to be having great fun. And the... Um... <laughs> I, can't, I know oh. the feeling. Uh, and the announcer was I know, just sort I know of it like explaining, oh, they've got the, the bird, oh, they've got the rabbit, oh, no, no, he's got the rabbit, oh, he's dropped the rabbit, oh, is he going to get the rabbit? Oh, the rabbit's in. Like, that was like... Is yeah. it not a problem to not be able to see if there's someone behind you as well? It looked like an awful lot of the time you're following someone and then it was just like, bump, you're dead, that someone else has got it. Well, you can look behind you, but you'll then fly that way, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let, let, let's let's wake CJ up and carry on, shall we? CJ, the Eagles have fled. 
They've lit the uh, torches so we... and the eagles have flown. Good, thank God. Thank God. Um, so, uh, combining uh, chattiness, uh, VR, and uh, actors, we saw Star Trek, Bridge the crew. VR experience thing, with people with people what the have Star been Treks. in science fiction mm. stuff. Um, mm. James, you go first. <laughs> so, this obviously looks a bit like, is it Space Team it's called? Uh, the iPad game where you, you all sort of get together and each person's on a different deck and getting a readout that you mm. then got to communicate between you to yeah, work out who's got to do the requisite action to keep everyone alive. Um, a bit like that, but obviously 3D environment, VR. The, the graphics didn't look great. It looked placeholder, didn't it? it? I mean, I'm sure once you're in there and enjoying it, you kind of forget that, but I was looking at it thinking, oh, that's... Um, you've put it on big screen e3 really um but they, but then they had actors who seemed to be having great fun and were pretty eloquent at expressing mm. what it was about the game that they liked um so that first first sort of intro video and 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 that kind of thing the, the kind of trailer um was fine but i was like i'm not really sure and then lavar burton I, everything about that man was wonderful I thought he seemed enthusiastic he seemed genuine he seemed knowledgeable he seemed to understand what was interesting about the game for him and for an audience um, I just thought every bit of that especially his interactions with Aisha um, and how enthusiastic they were just to be on the stage together with one another mm. just loved all of that if you're going to have people talking can we have those two all the time please yeah. it be them. <laughs> <laughs> I agree I completely agree I, I loved um, LeVar he's, he's like the loveliest man He's a lovely, enthusiastic, like you say, he's knowledgeable, he knows like why he enjoyed it, why he thinks other people will enjoy it. Yeah. I agree, the graphics looked a little bit PC gaming show. Um, <laughs> here's an early access game. Look, we'll change it later. Um, but I mean, like, I mean, they've tried to... Someone's made a version of this before, but not in VR. Uh, not not hmm. Space Team. Um, I've seen online there's a, a bridge simulator game you can get right. hmm. uh, where one person is the captain and they sit in a chair and they've got a television and they don't have any controls and everyone else gets a laptop and the captain right. has the viewport at the front and he has to tell people to bring up certain screens on the front and sort of oh, shout yeah. at them what to do yeah. like you get on the shields and oh Klingon's coming from the west that's the direction in space from right? the west wow <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while shut up it's been a long day um but it looked like it might be the sort of thing that if you got like six like-minded mates like should we be Star Trek tonight let's be Star Trek let's have a laugh like it yeah, looked like six like-minded like mates and a, and a six pack of beer or whatever and, and yeah. yeah just that's kind one of... beer each <laughs> well that's enough to take the edge off that's enough to have fun without being you can't be too drunk otherwise someone's going to be drunk driving surely <laughs> was there not an episode about that I'm sure in one of the early Star Trek they all just get a bit pissed they just can't fly it it's, it's really fun <laughs> um, but I thought like uh, I'd like to know if you could play it like Online, like not all in the same room, because who's going to have four headsets? No fucker. That was the other thing that stood out to me. It's like, really, yeah, and the, the, the we're having thing. VR land parties, are we? We all get together in the same house. Mm. And by the way, does anyone have a PC that's going to run four VR headsets? <laughs> or if yet, can you bring your one PC that does run your headset, and we'll link them all together? Link, yeah. yeah, I mean, like the Eagle one was more. Surely. The Eagle one was a more egregious example, oh, sure. wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. Eagle Regis. And and that one's competitive multiplayer, so you really don't probably want to be doing that mm. with any kind of lag in it either. So yeah, whereas at least Bridge Crew, they can account for delays over you know online networks and that kind of thing. So, mm. um, but I thought it looked it fun, and like I say, the whole like Lavar's um, pieces uh, and all, like, even like uh, they had uh, Carl Urban was there as well, wasn't he? He was, yeah. yeah. Um, and Jerry Ryan. Yeah. Please make Dread 2. Come on, please. Um, yeah. <laughs> he listens. I know he listens. Have you, Carl? <laughs> um, and Carl Urban as well was like really sort of getting into it, enjoying it. And it was yeah. just nice to see them all enjoying like doing mm. the space and like seeing Lavaba and really get into it and start busting out mm. the lingo. Like, oh, he's really good <laughs> at this shit. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd give that a go. I think that looks like a massive laugh. I would give that a go, no question. CJ, are you a C- Star Trek? CJ, you're thrilled, clearly. I am not a Star Trek fan. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure this um, appeals to those people that are. I thought LeVar Burton was drawing the strings very, very well with the, the people that were 
on stage and they were having a bit of a piss about but I didn't think it came across as particularly genuine Ooh. although I did like his laughs with, with Aisha but um, other than that mm, didn't hold my attention and I wasn't as moored with uh, said gentleman Ooh. as as, as you were I thought it was a bit painful but then like my my favourite genre of game I think is mm. rubbish stuff in space um, like <laughs> FTL is that a genre? It's a, no mate <laughs> You you know You're nothing. Right, then. Uh, you've got uh, FTL. Hey, uh, you got Wait FTL. Wait until PlayStation uh, VR. Then F- then you'll FTL is a tactical ro- or strategy roguelike. Yeah, it? about a crap spaceship. <laughs> but it's it's not the genre rubbish in space. No, there's more. Uh, right. Thars- Tharsis, uh, right. which was the dice based kind of yeah, almost yeah. board game game about getting to Mars mm-hmm. and it's all going wrong. Uh, there is a wonderful board game I've played uh, called Space Alert, where you're on a ship that's basically made of tin foil. And you have to survive ten real minutes uh, and not die. Um, I love space crap. I love like shit stuff in space. <laughs> like it's all held together with glue, and like you're all just running around going, "Put the power in the thing and power the guns." And we've got no power in the guns, and we fucked it. Oh, we've ruined. <laughs> they it. should have called this Star Trek space crap. <laughs> space crap. Oh, I'm in. Um, yeah. Uh, if not, I can, that's not a reflection tra- on the on the quality of the game. You understand? Just <laughs> it's an awesome title. If I can make this, the 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 Enterprise crash miserably by bad teamwork, I am in. <laughs> and I know it's a bad reason to be dry, but I love it. I love shit space games. I'm a big fan of them. <laughs> Reality. So back to uh, in inverted commas proper you, games sorry. and the. Uh, a game that that, that 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 you raved about last year and oh, yeah. it didn't throw me at all. Uh, Sorry, that's my only. That's... Yeah, yeah. Do you want um, to take the lead? Honor, there, I am still desperately excited for. Uh, of course, following the system, it means when it comes out, I won't be asked. But for now, like for Honor, like the stuff they showed off, like that looks like a game they've made for me. You know, here's Vikings. I mean, I'm going to pick the Vikings because who picks the samurais? What nerd picks the samurais? You bloody, you bloody <laughs> nerd! Samurai, you, if I was asked about weeaboo, playing it in the language of the internet. <laughs> um, it's all right, I'm but like, it looks like a proper it. kind of chunky combat. It looks like, um, it looks like a, a Koei Tecmo game, a Moose game. Dynasty Warriors, yeah, yeah, it looks like. Something but for like, African, it? Yeah. but for a Western market, Neo, if you can follow, yeah, mm. um, like it looks like. Yeah, I can see that. But it seems to it seems Ooh. to have like a similar combat system. But it looked to like Neo. it might have played better than Neo because Neo was wank. <laughs> with the, with the, do... Nah, you see, I haven't heard that. Do you not trust the board? Me? I've done a lot of people that are very excited for Neo after <sighs> playing that. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't uh, say not entirely. It was wank, but um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> very good. <laughs> but I uh, play, <laughs> playing that. Playing the Neo There's demo tremolo on James Carter there. <laughs> tempered my excitement for it because it mm. seemed a little trudgy at times and very repetitive. Yes, that that is true. Yes, it was an alpha though. To be fair, and they were asking for people's opinions of it. That mm. that really never happens on that that sort of game. So they they did what um, what doesn't usually happen with mm. um, Koi Tecmo games is they built up a bit of buzz for it. Not only for mm-hmm. people to get. Um, uh, their own opinion on the game, but I I know as as many people, well, more people that um, that really became jazzed about it um, as than than those who were dissenting and the conversations between, like they had an amazing mm. chat on eight four play um, as to what mm-hmm. worked and what didn't um, for them individually. But yeah, no, for this that looks, was, that was really I mean, cool. similar sort of combat system, I guess. But like, but, uh, I like that it seemed quite visual. You could see what you were doing, which I didn't get from Neo. I didn't feel much attachment to what I was doing whereas this like like you're holding your sword up to the left or to the right and you can counter and you can shield break and uh, like I was watching this one with Laura uh, and we were sort of both thinking oh that looks simple but like probably got a bit of depth to it like it's a big game of rock paper scissors almost uh, where you're trying to guess what your opponent's going to do mm, it looks brilliant yeah, it's all chunky the, uh, it looks meaty, like you can roll phenomenal. over your opponent and sort of get behind them uh, cutting up this, the, the, the chaff dudes like the dudes that are just there to fill out the numbers look yeah. deliciously satisfying, and they're putting mm-hmm. a full campaign in as well. Because that's my worry. I worried it was going to be a multiplayer-only game, and I don't tend to play them for very long. But if there's a full campaign in, then mm. I am mm. very interested, and it looked like the sort of thing that I like doing: running around and just killing a whole bunch of dudes. Mm. 
So story wise, it's it's um, lady turns up and turns the land upside down. Then there's a puddle and makes everybody from and everywhere. They all look fight at each other. other. And then and she shoots the man with an arrow, and then they all fight mm-hmm. again. And it kind of puts the name of the game sort of into like a little bit better focus because it, it looks like they've been fighting for so long, no one's really not sure why they're fighting anymore. It just looks like they're fighting to be for their own honor. Feel like no, we are the we are the warriors. We are the best. You know, we can't we can't give up. We can't look weak. We are doing it for our honor. And like that for me was quite I sort of resonant almost. Is that a good enough excuse for you I to run across you know lands and, to and that. shut the fuck out? <laughs> I think you know the answer because I, I think, think there it are is thinner only. plots than that. It's <laughs> been <laughs> just fine in video games. True. I'm sure on Digitizer they was they were saying that um, often story is is the the framing device by mm-hmm. which you you um, you place your action. And um, they, it looks pretty enough if the combat system's mm. uh, as as involving and as good as uh, as people say it is. Because mm. the view from the floor, because it it was mm. playable on yeah. the floor, uh, the view from the floor Plus, was really good phenomenal. to see Jason Vanderberg. Uh, like people really, really connected. Yeah, with and and this uh, this time even more than last time, he knew I the d- reaction he was going to get. I mean, he walked out and roared. <laughs> Come yeah. on, he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, he he comes he, he comes across as a great bloke, and um, I I um, I saw some stuff on Easy Allies with Michael Huber saying like I've got to find Jason Vanderberg, and he was like, "Hi, he's being interviewed by Gamespot now. I'll come back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone already." And he like he was trying to track him down. He just went up to him. The thing he said he was like, "I've got something to ask you," and like, put his hand on his shoulder. And he was like, yes, he was like, "Do you watch Vikings?" <laughs> <laughs> and he just he just like grabbed both of his shoulders and went, "Yes, of course I do." I want I want like this Vanderbilt moment of bonding. It was fantastic. He looks but, like uh, yeah, a brilliant person to play board games with. Yeah, yeah. I I'll say now that um, the division is UB's bestest or best selling, fastest selling Ooh. game. I think I'm, For Honor may may take that. I'm not. As sure, I, really uh, I think it's going to do very well, but I'm not sure about that because it doesn't have guns, and that sounds like such a reductive way to frame it. But man with gun in hand on cover of game gets a certain amount of sales just by being there. Make sure he's um, not looking at the screen. <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's yeah. lots of people with lots of weapons weapon fighting, fighting. weapon fighting. That's game. what they should call it. Um, or, or, yeah. Yeah, Renaissance. The beginning. Now have a, like a little little subheader because <laughs> every game's got to have weapon one, like, fighting. Revengeance. The beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um, in the beginning. Very so weapon fighting. For, for honor, sick as. Yeah. <laughs> smack, smack your beard up. Um, for honor, sick uh, as I'll be calling it, due to the lack of an appropriate you in the title. For honor. Um, Just take the o, the R's off, and then it could be for one O. Um, I, I definitely like got a Disney Wu-Tang. Warriors vibe. Obviously, cutting through hordes oh, of enemies to then get to a boss or mini boss uh, enemy. Yeah, um, that's infinitely more difficult. Um, it just looked very Dynasty Warriors, um, and the only one of those games I've played is Hyrule Warriors, and I got about halfway through and kind of ran out of steam on it. Uh, just because the combat, while fun, was quite repetitive. And I know mm. that's not a problem for most people. Those games do very well, and that's great. But uh, another game it reminded me of uh, that doesn't necessarily address that issue, um, or that perceived issue, I should say. It's not a real issue. I've only seen the demo. Mm-hmm. Um, was Rise a little bit. Looked a little bit sort of probably setting-wise and... Um, it's sort of close to the shoulder, third person action, heavy melee, um, very cinematic in the way that Rise kind of was. Um, but the thing that it did that kind of eased my concerns about the things I don't like about those two titles being melded together um, is that I thought the the combat looked incredibly intricate um, versus even Neo, I think. I think because you're you're controlling stances in Neo, but you could kind of get away with not really bothering that much and just kind of block 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 spam attack 
and then jump back and block again. Mm. Um, whereas this looked like you're going to get messed up if you're not paying attention to where you need to be blocking, how you're deflecting, and then taking your moments. Because there was a few times that um, the person playing the demo was was deflecting an attack and wasn't act, acting or able to act quick enough to get in and actually follow up. So you've got to really pick your moments and really be on it. And it looked like it could be incredibly intense. And yeah, I agree with you, Paddy. Lots of depth in there, I think. Um, mm. And apparently from a couple of reports I heard, quite hard. Whether that's hard to pick up once you get it, it's kind of fine. Or whether it's just hard all the way through uh, remains to be seen. But um, that kind of speaks to the demo last year that was quite technical and quite difficult. Um, but they've now kind of woven it together into a narrative and cinematic experience. Mm. Um, the fact you've got I a narrative really story is probably going to go far to help people get the combat system before jumping into the multi, surely. Yeah, and, and it should yeah ease people in because you can do that uh, in a narrative game where mm. you can't really if it's, uh, if it's just straight into... Because mm. you've seen the, in the sort of Dynasty Warriors style, the game, games that I've never really played that much the, the thing that steals me away from this 100% is sure. the um, yeah. the Berserk game that's coming from uh, mm-hmm. from Koei Tecmo uh, which just looks glorious um, and much more my kind of thing I think. <laughs> so, yes um, then we went into uh, a sequel to um, screen tearing <laughs> overrated shithouse Grow home, uh, <laughs> grow up, or as I termed it, Tell us how you fuck really off. Feel CG. <laughs> yeah, we we shall we shall because I, I I know the other slice of bread on the side um, of the sandwich, but James, grow home introduced your meat and looked interesting and vegetables. To me. I have it on PlayStation Plus. I think it came out on that. I, I've certainly got a copy of it somehow, um, but I have never played it, and therefore this looked interesting but I don't know what's what's just an extension of the first game and what's actually new it seems like it's going to be a bigger experience and I heard a lot of concern that a bigger experience for what was quite a uh, well paced three to four hour experience first time around might just be spreading everything a little bit too thin so that's the extent of my opinion on it is uh, intrigue and other people's opinions (laughs) That's all I've got. <laughs> so, so, Paddy, you get to get the final word on this, which suits me down to the ground. Because already spreading itself a bit too thin, it's clearly going <laughs> to some sort of uh, I'd go micro I mean, universe yeah, at this like, point. Then, if I didn't uh, know it was a sequel until that. they said it was a sequel. Uh, the original Grow Home I got from Plus, it was a horror show. Hated it every minute of it. That is, yeah, that's the noises I made. Um, I, they're like, oh, we did an experiment, and it worked. It didn't work. It My didn't rookie. work. <laughs> Take sandwich. it back. Maybe grow some balls is what they should have called it. Or, yeah, stick it back in the grow bag. Maybe work on your game not screen tearing on a PS4 oh. for crying out loud. Yeah, or bin it. Shove it in the compost what heap. See, that's, that's on of... this show. Uh, so, Trials of the Blood Dragon. Great. Are we skipping over great, the meat? Are we skipping great over trailer. The bacon, then? Thought it was a great yeah, trailer, the, the, the but um, guys in weird I suits will never buy it. Entrance. Yeah. What Music was that? And, uh, yeah. I mean, I understand that you want to do an intro, and it's Ubi, so you've got to do I it. If you want to stand it, out, so. you, you've got to really get get in there. Um, they were excited. I'll give them that. Yeah, I'll give them. They were excited, uh, and then they pointed out their bros in the crowd, and they were like, "Yeah, t-shirts and shades." Like that was kind of fun. Uh, I did a good trailer, but by all accounts, apparently, it's reviewing absolutely terribly. Yeah, nice to be able to drop the game immediately. But I, I think a lot of what I heard was, "Yeah, dropping a game during E3. That's a good way to make sure you get coverage, but not criticism for it. <laughs> you know, no one's going to be able to play it, but they'll all sure report it." Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big trials person, but when when someone said, "Oh, there's there's on foot bits," I thought, "Really? That sounds horrifying." Which apparently are like contra, from what I've heard. Yeah, that's sort so of. good. Um, but like, I like I'm the same with trials. Like, I want to like trials. I've played Evolution. I've played a bit of mm. Fusion as well, um, and I always get about sort of three hours in, and then I just get to a point where I just cannot be pissed with it anymore. 
I like the idea of it, but I just don't have the patience to go. Bram 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 bram, restart. Bram 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 bram, restart. Bram bram bram, fuck's sake. Bram bram bram, I'm done. Um, I like the the whole Blood Dragon style. I think that kind of '80s neon style needs to be used in more games because it's great uh, and it's got a really sort of unique, good look to it. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I want to like Trials games, but I just can't gel with them. And those that do, I mean, I've watched some people Twitch stream it, and it's like, how how does anyone get that good at these games? Yeah. Yeah. Like there are some mad people um, who seem to be able to thread their bike through completely vertical ladder sections somehow without falling, and the mind boggles how people get that good at that game. But mm. yeah, CJ trial, trial Dragon for you. I played this game um, on the Commodore sixty four, and it was called Kickstart Two. And it was all right, but it was also it was a lot of money in those days. It's worthless now. Um, Two ninety nine. I, I don't know. It might have been. It, it was indeed in the two ninety nine range. Was uh, was, was uh, a little, little bit more prestige. Um, so not every not every garage had those. Um, but, and uh, but yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm went for I went through, I enjoyed the presentation. And, and nice lot. to have a game. But, um, just sort no, of like boom, possible. there it is. Yeah, Whoop, there. Oh, I've just got flashbacks to that first Kinect trailer now. Yeah. Oops, <laughs> there it's the bottom is. of Avatar's shoe. It's like boom, there it is. <laughs> All joints break. Whoop. <laughs> anyway, whoop whoop. It's the sound of Assassin's oh, Creed. Shit, yeah, whoop. That nearly worked. Um, so the Assassin's Creed movie. Uh, did have you seen the trailers before? Did you like the stuff that was on? Or, screen awkward or awesome it was awkward um, or did you think it was when interesting? we we had a James thread Carter. running or we have a thread running uh, I, I guess it's past tense now on the uh, cane rinse forums just about what you're looking forward to from the shows and we sort of did our um, expectations and hopes and my expectation was they're going to cover the assassin's creed movie aren't they and my hope was please don't cover the assassin's creed movie um, <laughs> i i get it's a, Assassin's Creed I have no problem with being there that's a massive franchise it's a game that, or a series that I've moved away from uh, and, and just kind of drifted apart from and haven't played the last sort of couple certainly um, but we knew there wasn't going to be a game this year they'd said that they said they were going to take a year off it made sense to have the film there because they want to put a lot behind that they want to make it a success and they're they're by all accounts, they're giving it the best shot that anyone's ever really given over a, a a video game film, as far as I can tell, in terms of who's making it, who's in it, and uh, the the kind of um, budget that it looks to have from the trailer, which looks which looks pretty decent. I thought as a representation of Assassin's Creed on a big screen, but it, this is I don't want to be this is a video game show. Don't put your films in my video game show, but. Again, it's just something that breaks up the flow of a show like that, especially after Trials of the Blood Dragon, where you've just had two guys coming onto the stage in onesies and being a bit nuts. Um, to have a producer of the film come out and talk about making films smacked a little of James Cameron with Avatar, but at least they had Ooh. a game to talk about then. Ooh. Um, so I enjoyed the footage they showed and. But the the stuff they showed of interviews with um, cast and crew smacked of DVD extra that probably isn't really worth your time to me. It seemed like something that's going to be on the DVD when it comes out and uh, <laughs> watch once and fairly disposable. But I'm looking forward to watching the film. Yeah, I'm in the same sort of weird place with it where it came on and like it looked kind of cool. But like for me, something wasn't right with it. Like, like okay, there's Fastbender. Fastbender looks great. Uh, I think he'll do a great job. Fastbender always does a good job. He's one of the, probably yeah. the best working actors at the moment, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I love yeah, Fastbender. I, um, I thought the stunts looked fine. Uh, the action stuff looked fine. Not so sure about the real world stuff, maybe. Um, and from what the reports I've heard is that half the film is the real world stuff. It's it's all future Desmond. Um, do I want to watch a film that's half Future Desmond? Probably not. And this is as a man who enjoyed the Future Desmond stuff from Assassin's Creed. I was genuinely into all that. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm probably going to see it. 
But did this film, did this trailer sell me on it more than I already was? No. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to see it on the strength of Fassbender alone because he's brilliant. And um, two, two hours with him is two hours well spent. Exactly. I mean, people <laughs> give Prometheus shit, but I mean, we got two hours of Fassbender in space. Like, yeah. come on, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It, Fassbender's the only draw for me. I'm afraid. Um, it looks okay, but like you say, like yourself, I've I've fallen out of love with Assassin's Creed a bit. The last one I played with any seriousness was uh, was Black Flag. Uh, regular listeners will know, um, and that was like probably my favourite one. And then everything else after that just kind of felt like oh, I've, I've done this now. You know, I've done this before. I, I can't see myself going back anytime soon. And I'm kind of happy to take in a year off to sort of try something different and fresh with it. Um, but I know someone who's probably going to have a different opinion to that, <laughs> and I'm going to pass the baton uh, of Assassin's Creed to you right now. CJ, go. I loved Assassin's Creed Unity two pieces. It was my favourite Assassin's Creed since the first one, and all the ones that people really love, I have never mm. really been asked about. Um, so I, I hadn't seen any of the, the, the trailers for this, um, and enjoyed the footage that I saw. It looked good. I, people were saying that they thought that the um, the kind of armature thing that he was strapped into was shit, and I thought well, it looked good. Um, I'll go and see it, and I'll, I won't go and see it begrudgingly. I'll go and see it with the hope of being entertained, and I have uh, no particular love for Michael Fassbender other than brilliant, um, underrated. He was also in a, what, Laura, indie western what slow was the film west. We saw Michael Fassbender's which he was amazing in. Shame. Shame. Fantastic <laughs> Yep. Laura is. She loved that film. I um, like how she could just produce that. She loves his knobs. Straight out of thin air. <laughs> um, I haven't seen it. What have we done? <laughs> uh, it doesn't really cool. matter I'm because we have go. Watch Dogs 2, um, which I'm going to take the lead on on this one. And. I thought it looked great. Um, it might not be for me, um, but I like that they're trying something a little bit different with it. Um, it's certainly going to appeal to its market 100,000%. Uh, thought it demoed really well on the show. Um, thought it looked good. Um, the first game I've only played a bit of, but it was very wobbly. Um, and clearly, having played The Division, it felt like a, a kind of step towards The Division. Uh, in control and um, mechanics and shears. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get this. I think it looks fabulous. Um, like that they're doing something that doesn't involve kind of a, a man in a, <laughs> CJ, in a, a dodgy like scarf a... and a cap. A guy that looks like a pedo, basically. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go near there. There's a joke which Have you seen Michael you. Fassbender's um, <laughs> Hashtag watch out for turtlenecks. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It was a different time. None of us knew. (laughs) Um, (laughs) If Cliff Richard's fine, I'd imagine he's going to turn, I fear. That's the worst day of my life. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I. As, as Operation New Tree, knock on the doll. <laughs> That's not a euphemism, a euphemism for women. I can't even say it. You think I um, drank when you. My relationship um, with Watch Dogs is a bit weird. Anyway, um, trailer... Watch Dogs 2, James Carter. <laughs> 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 that, that sounds like the thing that we've, that we've just spoken about with Paddy. Um, but with, but with, so the, but with the very Ruffers, first trailer they saw, Ruffers. they they showed, like, what was that, five years ago now at E3? Four years? It was some. It was. Actually, it must have been 2012, four years ago, because it was before anyone knew that new consoles existed. Um, and it was one of those, oh, that looks a bit special, because it's doing stuff that other games don't really do. It's hacking, it's social stealth, it's social interaction. 
Um, yeah, he pulled out a gun at the end, but maybe you don't have to. That would be nice, you know, getting away by hacking um, security bollards and uh, bridges and stuff like that all looked good. And the, the some of the particle effects and lighting were a bit like, this is running on next-gen hardware, isn't it? And then, of course, you find out it is. But then every time I saw it after that, it kind of diminished in my expectation, or my expectations diminished, I should say, um, to the point where... By the time it came out, I was hearing a lot of kind of whole hum negativity, and I thought, you know what, I, I, not feeling it anymore. Um, looked a little too structurally like Ubisoft open world games often look, and they'd moved away from some of the stuff that I thought looked the most interesting in the first demo. Um, so this one, I was like, okay, second game. Assassin's Creed I did prefer the first but a lot of people found the second really paid off the promise of the first and maybe this was going to do the same and I think the tweet I ended up sending was I don't really want to play as a dick being encouraged to be a dick by dicks um, I think the main character and all of the other mask wearing emo emoticon eyed guys I think they look like horrible human beings being horrible I mean, the first thing you see him do is walk up, there's a couple leaning on a car. He just decides to start the car and drive it. Now, okay, let's suspend disbelief that you can actually do that with a car. He just drives it off away from them, parks it up in the middle of the road just for shits and giggles? Absolutely, but you don't yeah, have to play it that way. And they chose to demo this can, game that way and it just kind of made me auto. think, well, not really feeling it. Mm. No, sure. But like, no, yeah, sure, but, but my first intro to the character is... Yeah, the, character regard, the, the, the same template yeah. fits both. Like, it's not but Saints Row. Like, we expect it out of that. Like, here's, here's your character break something. Yeah, but again, with... I, Again, with with Grand Theft Auto, all yeah. the characters that they showed off there with the last game. But were they were dicks, dicks trying to hack the and revolution? And indeed, in the game, they, they were just were trying dicks. to make some money, weren't they? Um, like, they were dicks. So, um, Those, these are dicks I, that are like I just, part of the. I don't want to say like the hashtag yeah, revolution. Do you know what I mean? Then, they all just seem like horrible, like you say, James. Horrible humans. Yeah, but this. Uh, uh, but the the. But the thing is, I I got the impression from that demo that they were they were trying to um, yeah. usurp something far far darker that was going on, and certainly they showed off the jollity of the ways that you could play. Yeah. And I I agree I, with James. I was kind of a little bit disappointed yeah, where yeah, the lad yeah, definitely. picked out mm. the gun because I was enjoying seeing him like do stuff with the drones and sneak around and stuff, mm. but. And I think um, technically it, it was a trank gun. I don't think he was actually that killing that anyone, but he certainly was quick to whip out the baton it, but, and start tackling um, people to the ground. When it's like, mm. isn't there a smarter way to do this? The whole point of being a whiz kid hacker is to avoid having any of this mm. confrontation, to yeah. keep people safe. Remember how Deus Ex did that? Yeah. And was, again, in Deus Ex, mm. you didn't have to, and mm. the, the main character was kind of a dick, but um, mm. it, it showed yeah, off the flip, or at least. I, I saw the flexibility in that, whereas with this, I'm not sure. I, I got the sense that probably you're going to find out partway through that Dead Sec are actually not as good as, as they claim to be, and therefore it's going to be all right that they're all kind of dicks. But yeah, I wasn't feeling it. Um, looks great, and it, it, the, the setting, obviously, um, being that a lot of journalists covering the game are familiar with that area and all interested in seeing that it's got a little bit of the um, infamous uh, in, being set in Seattle and you know other games have kind of really gone for um, presenting the feel of uh, yeah. a particular location that's familiar to to you know uh, people that live there or have visited there uh, previously and so from that point of view I think it'll be uh, you know, a great space to explore. Looks brighter, looks sunnier, looks more vibrant than anything that they showed of the first one did. Um, but yeah, I just got tonally, it seemed quite off to me. Um, I don't necessarily need Boy Scout goody two shoes all the time, and I'm, I'm not averse to, as you mentioned with Grand Theft Auto, characters that are reprehensible and I actually kind of hate all the time I'm playing them. Um, if there's nuance there and I just didn't get a sense of nuance from anything that's going on here and yeah mm. it's just a demo yeah it's just a trailer but it can, I kind of wanted it to suck me in a bit more and it, it kind of spat me out yeah I mean I, I kind of rankled up the whole kind of like you know the wake up sheeple sort of 
feel of it. And like that's one of the same reasons, and I'm going to catch some internet flack for this. It's one of the reasons I didn't like Devil May Cry DMC. Because that all just made just mm. felt tired, and it hurt my teeth. Uh, I had other problems with that game, but I didn't like that in there either. Like, uh, oh, we are you. You should rise up. We are the revolution, and the people are the big people are bad. They're really bad. I just, uh, I. Ooh, are <laughs> Don't with, with the Cornish people Them in DMC. Cornish energy drinks, I tell you, old old Cornish pirate people. <laughs> That's another good example. Like yeah, chuck better. things at you while you're putting on your <laughs> pants. Another good so example, actually, of a protagonist not. who um, is is a dick, but there was enough of a likable roguishness about him, and I didn't get that sense from this character. Mm. And uh, maybe in the game that will come through. It, it just, yeah, it, it didn't demo well. Didn't um, grab me. What and he's running around with a dead set hat on as well. Yeah, you're not supposed to be keeping that a maybe patch. a bit on the hush hush. A sticker on his bag cyber as well. Yeah. If there's someone leaving the scene, he's got a dead set hack and bag on, but he has got a baseball cap on, so he's probably not a hacker. Like, <laughs> come on, dude, at least try and be covert. <laughs> um, but apparently, I, I read something the other day, apparently you can beat this entire game without using non-lethal force at all. Whether that means crank yeah. guns and nightsticks, I don't know, because I don't really count sure. that. Yeah. That's yeah. not ghosting. You know, that's that's not cool. Uh, but... No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you're, I just you, I was you're just bit I'm, I don't think I'm gonna. I, I'm not interested. Didn't interest me. Uh, if anything, it turned me you off. You were the game a fine, slightly. gentleman. <laughs> no, but this is their chance to convince me, and they didn't. You were never gonna I've buy it turned, anyway. Hey, I've, I've been turned around on Doom. No, no, yeah, it's never I'll, a I could be turned around on the game you. by a good by a good showing at E3, but this was not one of them. There, there, there is that. Yeah. Let's 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 not apply the, the term doom to today. Um, so, uh, although the next title of this game does actually apply <laughs> to uh, the Steve. the giant rainy umbrella um, that we're sadly hiding under now, um, steep um, mm. look, came really left of center and looked different and fabulous. Um, I was really taken with this, and all credit to UB that it mm. looks a little bit different, and that they're um, mm. they're giving people a, a, a beta at a certain point, mm. so we can see especially for given the fact that it looked the like Criterion one of those game about going really fast in the hang glider and the motorbike is now officially gone. It's dead. Yeah. And that had wingsuits as well, didn't it? So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is this is our going fast this in a wingsuit. Well, game. especially the uh, the they mentioned Which VR for that as well, didn't they? Or there would be yeah. something VR. So, uh, yeah, potentially a possibility of uh, VR wingsuiting. Christ, um, that sounds great. I I have I have never played a ye olde SSX or Amped or even Tony Hawk. Um, um, cool borders. Th- this had more of a look to me. Of a skate where it might be, you might be able to get quite technical with it, and you're trying to, uh, you know, persistent leaderboards and challenges that you can throw at your friends and stuff like that. Uh, what did you guys think? Hmm. That's the um, that's the that's the opinion I I I got from the floor. That he did, um, a few people that were trying to play it were trying to play it in the same way as they played it at SSX, and it is a little bit more technical as you were mentioning um and the 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 point where i think you'd leap off on like the snowboard and stuff it's it's, is a a real sort of knack and sense of timing he said but we saw we saw you know admittedly devs sort of playing it and they got that down pat um so um left of uh, center you always lend end the show with something sort Mm. of quite different to this so i was (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's really, really, then they have really failed, sir. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd buy sure. it, yeah. but um, no, it's it's just not the sort of thing that I'd I'd put time into. Um, uh, although um, hmm. SSX has come to this is um, Xbox One backwards compatibility. Is this early December that's as well? That's really good. Maybe so I might give that a, a bit of a spurs. That's great. Right. Se- seems like a, a, a really smart time to bring it out. Yeah. 
Mm. A snowy game at Christmas. Especially yeah, it's if Christmas it's going to be full game, priced, it, yeah. but it's maybe there's not a campaign or anything, or it's mm. just kind of mm. a bit like Burnout Paradise multiplayer, where you're just kind of floating around hills from hill to hill and, and piece to piece. Here's a hill, go. Yeah, just having fun and just relaxing. It mm. could almost be a kind of, I've got half an hour to chill out, let's stick this on type thing. Maybe. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I can imagine like a wingsuit sort of racing with your mates would be would be a really good laugh. Um and uh I don't know we we've, we've spoken mm. about how busy games are going to be like up until October time. Um and yet if they are positioning yeah. this at, at, at December even, even like I don't November, really think there's an uh, awful Assassin's lot Creed the last that's coming years, out say, like dead on December kind of I think most things are already out at, at that point mm. uh, and I don't think there's anything in that slot so early December could be once everyone's got over the four weeks on the trot of AAA shooters um, might be uh, might be a good shot mm. mm. oh. yeah Mm, yeah. 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 Also, you know, it will probably look quite Christmassy on shelves with Santa lots of snow and mm. stuff. So if it can, if if it can steal the yeah, the, the big yeah. release at that point, mm. it will probably snare. Yeah. Yeah. Anything daft like that, I think would would be would be wonderful. You know, like for God's sake, it, even though you've got a, a oh, great game yeah, that you no, that's loads of fun and you're taking that, it yeah. seriously. Give us like Splinter Cell, and, and like with skates, lean and into the Assassin's Creed crash, snowboards, and, and just and pimp a picture that like you, a motherfucker. You know, your, your on you play and stuff. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. He, here's here's an X-ray of you just mangled and you know in your Santa hat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but just just lean into the ridiculous side of it because uh, mm. whenever you're you're mucking Look. around with mates, whether it be via leaderboards or directly. Yeah, just go for it. Just let people be stupid and daft mm. and crash into one another and yeah. Yeah. I mean I'd never made the connection between skate and this until you said it like at the start of this bit. Like all of a sudden it all clicks into my head why this mm. looks so appealing mm. to me. Because I, I saw this and I was like gobsmacked. Like this looks like a thing I want. Um L- as a man really who's as well, yeah, yeah. I one night, uh after skate one had come out, I spent probably is this close, a safe story. This is fine. Uh I, I was nude. <laughs> um, I spent Tell approximately me. two and a half hours trying to do a triple front flip over one of the ramps in the game. Mm. I did it. I was proud. I finished at like half one in the morning, but I did it. And that, I think, for me, is what might be cool here. If you can do that kind of instant whip back and try again, mm. like mm. Uh, I'm going to try and hit this particular thing, and I'm going to do it and do it and do it until I get it, and I'm going to save the clip, I'm going to put it on YouTube, and I'm going to be famous. Um, Turns out the triple front flip did not get me famous, but you know we tried. <laughs> um, but like the whole fact you can pause and rewind, and you can look at your, your replays and kind of make cool little videos and kind of take cool shots of it. Like I love that stuff in skate. I love the ability to mm. any time just say, right, stop. Let's look at what I just did. Let's enjoy the thing that just happened. And like with the multiplayer as well. Like I remember playing past the pad yeah. with my little sister mm-hmm. and kind of doing um, the, uh, the sort of the horse challenge where you both kind of do a yeah, spot yeah. until yeah. one of you cocks it up. Like I'd love if they put something like that in there, mm. something you could sort of take turns trying to hit a certain spot and, and land in it, and then when you cocked it up, you get a, uh, I, I suppose the the word steep maybe this time. Um, yeah, why not? Yeah, hours absolutely. of fun with that. Hours yeah. of fun. I can imagine if it's if even if you're like sitting in on your own and you, it's grouping you together mm. with strangers to do those races, it would still be fun to have that many people mm. sort of on the mountain and to be uh, continually you know almost like destiny like continually earning stuff mm. and getting new getting new fashions and uh and new boards and um it's strange you, you mentioned yeah. skate because yeah. Yeah. um there's a lot of people that are still baying mm. for a new skate or from the xbox one side of things uh skate three has been confirmed for backwards compatibility yeah. but it's just not arrived yet and yet ea mm. just completely aren't asked with doing a new one and i'm wondering if this might tap into into that well we've got yeah, no skate yeah. we've got no mm. ssx uh, and then people play the demo and they go fuck this is what i want um so I, whilst you can you can accuse betas oftentimes of, of, of just being a demo i think in this case it's mm. gonna 
It's going to yeah. really work. Plus, I love the idea of just to see how people play uh, it, disciplines going people down people a hill. Like here's the skiers, here's the wingsuits, uh, here's the snowboarders. Much like what Motorstorm used to do. I loved I was, that. In I Motorstorm. was just going to say actually, I wasn't going to use Motorstorm as the example, but yeah, having everyone mm. maybe someone in a wingsuit, someone on skis, someone on a snowboard, um, all that sort of stuff going on, crisscrossing over with your friends mm. all at the same time, all having fun doing different stuff, but interacting. Um, felt to me a little bit like what they were trying to get across in the Forza Horizon 3 mm. uh, demo that they did where everyone's in different vehicles clearly not competing in the same events but just they're all in the same world crisscrossing over that burnout paradise thing where if, if Forza 3, Forza Horizon 3 is to burn out what this is to skate and we just need someone to make a Dead Space game and EA can just actually forget about all those franchises because <laughs> um, clearly they've got no interest in doing anything with them mm. um, Right. So, so um, what did yeah. Steve mate looks what brilliant? What did you make of yeah, the so. Ubisoft show in general? I feel like I've been quite down on all these games, and looking at them, I mean, there aren't that many that I'm probably going to run out and grab day one. So maybe that's why. But their show, and specifically the tone of the show at the beginning. And yes, Aisha made the point that it, it, it's a little odd, a sharp right turn, I believe was her, her phrase, to to kind of excuse the fact that yes, they've got a nice sort of vibrant dancing dancey opening, but that doesn't mean they can't follow that up with a, a really nice touching tribute to the victims and the, and the friends and families of the victims in Orlando. And then at, at the end, obviously tonally very different, but um, they got everyone out the Ubisoft family as we often we've seen a few times uh, and it looked an awful lot like that was um, Yves Guimot basically doing a speech about how Vivendi keep your hands off our company basically uh, because there were a lot of rumours going around that Vivendi were going to um, try and put in a, a, an offer to, to buy outright uh, Ubisoft um, and that was a nice example of what this sh whole show represented for me, which was we are a big family who has great fun making games, and that always comes across from Ubisoft. Ever since Aisha uh, Tyler's been I involved think, in... I um, think she's, the, she's definitely the through line between all of this, because yeah. even though there's some stuff that hits and some stuff that doesn't, she's always this constant bet between either mocking or presenting yeah. or laughing at herself or laughing at the games, and... and it's very easy to sit there and be entertained as a whole for the show, and just because it, mm. it came to the end of this, and I was like, "Yeah, I really enjoyed yeah. that." And even though we break this mm. down, and there might be some stuff that's that's more for me for it than, than others, and maybe in many cases stuff that's not specifically for me, I still really enjoyed that yeah. show. And a, a big part yeah, of that was big... was just how she uh, she she yeah. she was. Entrancing through it, she was she was wonderful. And, and actually, um, this was longer than any other previous Ubisoft show I've watched because they didn't have to worry about running into EA's mm. slot, so they went just slightly over the two-hour mark. But it zipped along. I thought I thought they did mm. much better than a lot of the other shows at not having those moments where it just completely stopped. South Park for me, the the talky bits got a little bit close, but I could see the appeal of it, and, and it's always fun hearing from Matt and Trey about why they're excited about uh, a video game uh, or a South Park video game but yeah I thought the, the pace of it and the consistency throughout uh, having having Aisha there to just manage things and keep things going and even when Eve Gamo who's not as comfortable on stage is on stage with her um, she's she brings out the best in, in all the other people mm. that are there mm. Sorry, um, I've just got to quickly run because shopping has arrived. Let's just hold for a moment. Okay. Do, 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 do. Paddy, you want to, Actually, you want to give your, your closing comments while James runs off and grabs bags and things? Go on then. Let's not edit. Fuck it. Um, yeah, I can only concur. Um, I mean, Ubisoft, as you say, it's like the show with the games that aren't really for me, but this is the show for me. Mm. Uh, this is the show I want to watch every year. This is the one I get excited for because Ubisoft always give you something a little bit left to centre. Like they always give you something interesting. It's fun. Uh, Aisha Tyler always does like just a fantastic job as the centre point of the whole show. You know, she really brings it all together. She wants to be there. She's excited to show off the game. She's having fun with the crowd. It's it's entertaining to watch, and it's what a game show should be about. It's 
here's some interesting stuff. Boom, 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 boom. Here's a game. And I actually thought the presentations of the games themselves were really good this year. Mm. Um, it was, right, here's a game. Here's a quick cinematic. Here's some of the game. We're going to tell you a bit about the game. Next game. And I think they kept that sort of system up quite a bit. They showed quite a lot of gameplay uh, in the mix of trailers and a mix with chats and stuff. Um, I don't think there was any candidates for me for the 20 minutes of Wanky On Awards, so we're doing very well. Um, yeah, U- Ubi was a fantastic, fantastic show. Like we say, even if I'm not going to buy a lot of the games they showed, like bringing out something like Steep as your final thing to show off, mm. genius. Perfect. I want that. I want to buy that now. Really? I didn't know. I didn't know you were quite that that taken with it. That's cool. Do you know how many hours I put into Skate? I really didn't know that that was your sort of thing whatsoever. I must admit. I think back back in the before times, before before we met on that rainy weekend, um, oh, I played a lot of Skate. Skate one and Skate two are like mainstays uh, of like where I went from sports games because I, I liked I used to like Tony Hawk quite a bit kind of drifted away after Thug 2 was the last one I enjoyed yeah that's right I said Thug 2 and come at me internet um, and I kind of drifted away and Skate was that uh, there was a demo come out on the PS3 and I just clicked with it just like like that like this is great I understand and since then you know it's been Skate's been the only skating game I can do and this looks like it's channeling the same thing and for having to put something like that which seems so focus targeted it's like you know you like that game about going fast on a Bill Wood Here's a new one of them, but you can do it with your mates, and you can go, hey, do you want to go down a mountain? Let's go down a mountain together and have a laugh. Having a laugh, down the Alps. Um, yeah, I think it just caps off for me what uh, was a, a good, another really good, really well-paced, uh, really entertaining, um, just great show from Ubisoft, and they, they consistently deliver every year, I think. I, I love it. It's the one I look forward to, more than Sony, I'd even say. Because no. It's, because it's batshit. <laughs> I suppose there is a degree of unpredictability in there. Um, yeah. We're just waiting for James and his closing comments, um, which you will probably have to edit in, uh, because I have to go in a moment, uh, because I have to get some food in, whilst James is sorting out the food that he's already got in. Um, and Tesco closes. It's getting very meta at the end, isn't it? It is. I'm not editing. Marvellous. Right, you can't well, make me. Right, I'm gonna fuck off then. Right, don't hang up from the call. Did what? I'm gonna have to. It will kill it. Well, I'm, I'll just stop the stop the thing then. Stop your yeah yeah, but don't hang up from the Skype call just yet because it will kill James. Yeah okay. Okay, well thanks thanks for joining us on this show. Hold on, uh, I did, did it? Did I did I close James? I'm, no no, James I'm saying close? thanks to I'm saying thanks to you. What? What did I do? <laughs> As you leave, I'm saying thank you to you, All right. and then I'll finish up with James. Thanks, yeah. CJ, for joining us on this Ubisoft D3 show. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, we will be doing a Sony show, um, which will be <laughs> packed full of all the things that Patrick likes. Squares and triangles and all that good stuff. Yeah. Right. Goodbye. Cool. Bye, you. And now hopefully this will be James. James Carter. Hello. Hello. Right. Okay. So, slight update. CJ's had yep. to shoot. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to do some stealth editing. I'm not. I'm going to do the editing really, really badly. Um, <laughs> uh, so, just me and you now. Uh, so, I would like to ask you, James, uh, as CJ's yes. now left us, uh, your final thoughts on Ubi. Uh, I, I really pleased with the show. I thought of the uh, of the conferences, it was most entertaining. Mm. I, 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 yeah, I, I'm not sure why I'm hesitating about that. Uh, most most entertaining and most polished by kind of a country mile. Um, mm. Are you confused that, with yourself that you didn't expect it to be that way? Well, well, just because looking at the list in terms of hit rate of games mm. slash announcements slash whatever, um, they had uh, I think twelve if we mm. include the the film, um, and yeah, there was probably only maybe a quarter of those that that interest me uh, greatly mm-hmm. um, which isn't necessarily I'm sure Ubisoft are happy with that if everyone well they've still got a hundred of your of their, <laughs> yeah exactly bought a quarter of their uh, of their games that they showed I'm sure they'd be happy but um, versus Microsoft and Sony perhaps they didn't have quite as many sort of uh, instant successes as far as I was concerned mm. but no I thought I thought it was a good show um, there's a lot of stuff on there that I, I appreciate is um, is going to be Massively success, successful, and uh, be a big hit with other people. Um, but yeah, for me, For Honor, um, South Park, Steep, 
you know what, that's a pretty good selection of three games right there off the top of my head mm-hmm. from from the list that, um, that yeah, enthused me. But, uh, yeah, in terms of the show, I think it was, it was the best put together show. I thought it was really nicely done. The tone of it was great. I thought it was fun and it was entertaining. Um, so... That's what you can ask for. for more than that. Yeah. When uh, when when looking at some of the other shows, particularly EA, for example, <laughs> um, that really wasn't the case. Um, yeah. So, so that's yeah. much much what I said in my own wrap up. And yeah. Sure. So excellent. Um. Well, that was uh, Ubi then coming in at one hour twenty five odd, which is great because it means we've made some time back up on the yeah, Microsoft we made show. Back about thirty five forty minutes there. That's cool. Good. Excellent. Uh, I'm not sure what the official count is now. I think we're now just an hour behind. I think. <laughs> Who knows? That's pretty going to go all to hell tomorrow. Yeah, Sony's um, going to wreck that. Yeah, uh, but thank you again for joining us, James. Um, that's all. Thank you for having me. Thanks, CJ. Thanks, CJ. He said thanks. Yeah, he's in the background. He's, he's waving. Saying. He's waving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next time is Sony. Thank you, everyone, again for listening. Uh, and we will see you on the next show. Ibixison! Ibixison! Bye bye. <laughs> 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 okay, that's probably good. <laughs>